everybody, I'm Nasty Mold, and we do have a major update for Sky. This is patch 0.24.5. So we're going to go over most of the new stuff that has been added, mostly the more juicy and exciting stuff. Sorry I haven't been making a lot of videos lately, I've been a bit under the weather. To start off, Days of Bloom is coming back from March 25th to April 14th. This time, this event is going to take place in the Prairie Peaks. There's going to be a huge rainstorm and then flowers, of course, will begin to grow. Um, the river is going to overfill quite a bit, but that will be very fun for us when we become jellyfish for this event. I'm so excited with this Days of Bloom event. They did such a good job. So this is the river and these little stones indicate the level that the river is at. Um, as it rainstorms, it's going to fill up more and more and more. And this place will flood a little bit, maybe not quite flood, just uh, overfill slightly. Uh, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of water here, so I can't even really dive in. But there's a lot of plant life underneath, and as it begins to fill more and more, we have a lot more water. This plant life is going to grow hugely. Oh, you'll also notice I have a portal cube on my back. This was recorded in the beta, so that's not in the game quite yet. But hey, when PC launches, it should be. The event, of course, is always super interactive. There are uh, event currency, little blooms that we can find all over. Oh, it just started to rain. Look at that. Cool. There's also a spot in which we can get shocked by uh, lightning, which is kind of freaky. Let me show you that really quick because it's actually kind of cool. It's one of the ways that we can get event currency. Uh, over here by the stone. We're just going to stand here and wait for it. Oh, didn't have to wait very long. And there is our event currency. Yippee. Very silly, very fun. All previous Days of Bloom items are set to return, but of course we have some new stuff, which I will show you in just a little bit. We're also going to have a brand new event tech thing. So much like last year where we had the uh, butterflies in the Forgotten Ark, this year we have just a huge group of jellies. So I'm going to sit down and it's going to bring us to Jellyland. There we are. A jelly, just like the Apora concert. There aren't very many jellies in this area right now. But uh, it's a fun way to fly around with your friends, pick up some wax, of course. It's so cute. When there's a lot of players, it's very fun. Oh, look, there's some here. Hello. I've been having a lot of fun in this mode um, using the Aurora emotes and trying to coordinate with the other jellies. Um, everyone using the same emote. It's always so cute. Alright, let's check out the new cosmetics for this event. I'm not going to go over all of the previous cosmetics. Um, I'll do that in a future video closer to Days of Bloom. But the new stuff is just incredible. This is an event currency item. It's this adorable hair. I believe this one is called the Petal Hair, and this one is meant to be 25 hearts, which is a little strange. Uh, this one is the Spiky Sprig Hair, which will be 24 event currency. So precious, it reminds me of Zag from Hades a lot, actually, especially with these sprigs of uh, leaves on the sides. Adorable. And then we have this brand new Arum Petal Cape which will be 48 event currency. I absolutely love the dew drops on it. The shape of it is so pretty. The gradient from green to white. It's adorable and it's going to look really good with some of the other dew droppy items like the uh, leaf from Season of Moments. And then we have our in-app purchase, which is the Lily Pad Umbrella for $14.99 USD. This is so pretty. It's so cute. It has its own unique sound effect too. A giant leaf with dewdrops on it. It'll protect you from rain. One thing that I really appreciated about this year's Days of Love and Days of Bloom is they've only brought one in-app purchase item, so I don't get overwhelmed with having so many. We also have the Spring Camping event, which will be arriving from March 4th to March 10th. This is a short mini event kind of focused around shared spaces. This one will take place in the secret elevator area within Daylight Prairie. Um, that is where we can find Oreo, the dog, of course. And we're also going to have a big group of traveling spirits arrive. 
I will go into deeper explanation about each of these spirits and their estimated pricing or even confirmed pricing in a future video, but we can expect the nodding muralist who has this adorable little gnome hat and this mask as well as the nod expression. Now we have seen the spirit a few times so it's not super exciting for everyone, but we do have some brand new ones arriving. We also have the Indifferent Alchemist. Again, we've seen the spirit quite a few times, but they have this very long beard, which I know a lot of players are excited for. This kind of turban and long hairstyle and this beautiful cape. And then for our new spirits that we haven't seen as traveling spirits, we have the Ceasing Commodore, which has this really cool, really warm looking cape. This long Viking style beard and of course the braids with the half side of their head shaved. It also has tattoos on that side. So cool. And of course, like the other Abyss Spirits, it has a broken and shattered mask, which also looks pretty cool. And then of course, we'll have the Frantic Stagehand, which has to be one of the most favorite upcoming traveling spirits at this point. They have their black outfit with their kitty hood that matches so well, and this eyebrow style penguin mask. Their whole fit is so unique and so different and something that you don't see in spirits very often, so I think a lot of people are going to be very excited to dress like little kitty cats. We also have some massive changes to the Eye of Eden, which make it a lot easier in my opinion. One of the best changes is you can now wear a chibi mask and you can walk up pretty much just as easily as someone who is normal sized in the game. Um, I don't know if everyone knows, but the chibi mask does make it a lot harder to climb up on rocks and ascend the mountain. There are improved controls for running and jumping, which is really awesome because I tend to sprint through the Eye of Eden. It does make it a lot easier to go through without you know, jumping into stones or jumping out of cover, things like that, so that is very nice. Probably the biggest change is the amount of damage your character can now take. You can take a few bonks in the head even without wearing one of the Elder Masks. And if you do manage to lose your light, you're not automatically put into crawl mode. You can actually take a few more hits. So that is really nice. You don't have to depend on somebody to come pick you up to actually get out of the way of more falling stones. It does make it a lot more solo friendly. And this does make the end part a lot more easy. You can tank a lot of hits before falling down and before actually crawling. In fact, I think that I ended up crawling in this run of Eden at the very, very end, like the last three um, statues. So it's basically a non-issue now. They've also improved the cover a lot. So a lot of the time you would be in front of a light behind cover and you would still get hit. That doesn't happen quite so easily. Of course, it will still happen from time to time, but yeah, it, it feels a lot safer to actually be behind rocks now. Especially for this last bit of cover here. This is the last light before you know the very end of Eye of Eden. Um, look at how big this stone is now. Sorry, I've fallen down, so kind of dying but it's huge it can block a lot more of the stones for you and your friends i remember i would just be standing here with my friends trying to make sure we get our charge properly before we keep going yeah it's pretty nice and one of my favorite things is after you have lost all your light you do become a light that follows other players but finally we can use our emotes again I don't know why I miss this so much. This was one of the funniest things where you're waiting for your friends and you just throw confetti at them. Hilarious. So that is an option once again. We can finally use emotes and expressions. Although, you know, you don't really have a sentient form, but they can at least see the particle effects. And even greater is that this pop-up appears a lot sooner. I think it's only been about 30 seconds and look, we can move forward to the next stage alone without waiting for others. Previously, this would take minutes to pop up, a lot of minutes. I want to say five, but that does seem a little crazy. So I can go on without these players pretty much instantly. In other news, Android players will finally be able to record videos in game without their UI showing, which is really awesome, especially for content creators. This is probably one of the best ways that you can record a video. So I've tapped it and you can see that it is recording. What this does is it removes all the UI. So at the very top of the screen where it has my weighted light count, that won't show up. If I open the menu, this menu and the emotes won't show up at all. If I open the settings, 
that won't show up. Same goes for other players' text. If they're talking to you, that won't show up. Um, as well as my little movement icon here, you can see where my thumb is on the screen. That won't show up. And if I open this, this won't show up either in the recording. So that is really awesome. Very happy for the Android content creators. And if you're unsure about what I mean, this is the exact same recording I just took. So you can see, you can't see any of the menu things. I'm gonna open the menu here, use an emote. The emotes don't show up. It's really awesome. It's a great way to make your videos look a lot less cluttered and just a little bit tidier. So it's cute. You can walk around without seeing your thumb move and make your character walk. How lovely. Hi, Stewie. Oh, I can't see your menu. And that's awesome. Another change is that if you have the Peking Postman's outfit, the shoes have now been separated. So we have the outfit and then in another category, we have the shoes, which are where? Why can't I see them? Let me go through all my shoes really quick. So they have done this previously with a few outfits. Um, it's nice to see that they're still continuing to do it because some of the boots look really cool. Well, there it is. Those are the boots. Uh, some of them look really cool, mix and match with other outfits. And now we can do it if you have this particular outfit and boot combination. And actually, these boots look so cool with this outfit I have on right now. It just matches it so well. So yeah, it's a pretty minor change, but it's really cool for those who really like to change their outfits and mix things up a lot. We also have a new dive mechanic when jumping into water, which is really cute. Previously, you would have to actually tap on a specific dive area, like maybe in the treehouse, there'd be a dive section, but this just happens automatically when jumping into water. Now I have to wonder why they would change this animation. It does look great. But it does make me wonder if we're going to have another water focus season coming up. We haven't really had a season specifically on and about the water since the season of Abyss, which is when they invented the uh, actual swimming mechanics. So yeah, we'll have to see. Maybe we can expect something cool coming up. And finally, for some minor changes, we just have some uh, rearranging of the aviary village. If you're in the event room, we now have a hallway that will take you directly to like the main shop section of the aviary village. So going through this hallway has brought me to the section that is connected to the hair salon. Kind of neat. It's all connected. It does make me happy to see that they're still updating and changing the aviary village and improving on it. We have so many little areas that are blocked off still and, you know, I want those areas filled. I want to be in them. Is this new? Have we always had shoes here? Whoa, I can change my shoes here. Maybe I'm just not very uh, good at noticing things, but I think that's new. Yeah, TGC has also teased that there might be some sort of a home building function in the aviary village, so I can always make a video on that if you guys want me to talk about it. Another change is that we have this section here, which is going to be a cafe. I've already shown a little bit of it in the beta, but I don't want to spoil too much in this video. Essentially, spirits are going to come here every day and you can accept some quests from them. They're going to be the exact same as the ones that you can get at the uh, statue. But it's kind of cute to get them from spirits. We also have a mysterious hallway that's being built here. Hmm, I wonder why. Maybe we can show work in the cafe. That'd be so cute. Oh boy. Yeah, that's it. A few changes. I'm really excited for Days of Bloom. I'm super excited for the Eden changes. And yeah. That is about all I have to share, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. It's so bright here. Oh, my goodness. Um, it means a lot. Sorry I haven't been as active as I normally am. I'm going to try and get back in the swing of things. I've just been really sick and laying in bed and also playing a lot of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. See you around. Love ya.